Hey, uh, John, line A, pointless in five games. Is that just the yin and yang of a season? Is that something he needs to, to, to adapt, or is it something the play around him needs to start getting him more involved offensively? No, he needs to be – he needs to move, get his legs moving more. I, I, think, I think he's trying to uh, – he tends to slow it down looking to pass a puck. Uh, I like to see him go north more. Um, I don't think their line played that well the last game, uh, both offensively and defensively. Uh, so yeah, but he'll he'll work him it, it he'll work himself through it. They're um, they're a good line. It's it's just been a little bit of struggle, and I I, I do think it uh, has to do with playing more north than east and west. Yeah. Um, a day off on the road yesterday. Have you as a coach tried to steer around those given the limitations of what players can do? I mean, when they're home and it's an off day, they have their families, they have their routines at home. I, I, I'm guessing that an off day on the road feels really different. No, we did it for a purpose, uh, although it's hard to, uh, to generate uh, some, some team bonding with the restrictions that we do have. But yesterday was given off for just that purpose, for them to get together as a team. Um, it, there are so many, there would have been so many good things for them to do as a team outside in the public, uh, but we can't do that. So we tried to adapt as best we could uh, in the hotel. Uh, so it was done for a purpose, Portsy, it, it, um, because I, I do think we need to try to find some time without the coaches with them for them to do something together to bond a little bit with, with all the new bodies and, and just lack of uh, having some fun. Uh, uh, you, you just, you're not able to, uh, to chum around as a team uh, like you used to be able to. We want to try to manufacture that yesterday as best we could. Thank you. Next we'll go to Dave Metzl. Go ahead, Metzi. Thanks Todd. Uh, John, you guys scored two goals in the first four minutes of the third period the other night. I know that goals against at the end and beginning of periods have been an issue for you guys. How nice was that to see your team take control of a period and how much have you, uh, have you emphasized that if at all? No, we, 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 we don't emphasize let's try to score at the beginning or, or we're just trying to play the right way. Uh, I think we get a, a, a turnover. Uh, they turn it over uh, on the wall and we capitalize. We were very opportunistic there. Uh, I think that's a really important note there. There was a turnover. We have a great chance, but we score. Uh, really important. And, um, and the, th the third goal was a little bit of hard work by a line that played pretty good. Get a little fortunate off the skate, uh, but they did a lot, of, uh, a lot of work as far as the forechecking throughout that game. Um, so, Dave, we don't, we don't, we, we certainly talk on the other side of the puck that uh, uh, we, we can't keep on giving up these goals beginning and uh, late in the period, at the end of the period. We've talked about that, but we're just trying to solidify our game uh, right on through. Got to be gratifying, though, in a tight game to see you grab a hold of a period like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then for me, and, and you don't want to script it the way it went, um, we have full control of it at 3 nothing. Uh, and, and then I, I think we have a breakdown in the defensive zone coverage. Uh, they score and they score another one. Uh, do you call a timeout? I talked to you about that after the game. I, I like the way we handled ourselves. Uh, they score the second goal. They have one more dangerous shift against us on a rush uh, when we turn a puck over in the offensive zone. But then I thought the last six, seven, seven and a half minutes, I thought we played uh, pretty well. Got back to a little bit of forechecking, but I don't think we were spooked. I, I thought we calmed ourselves down and played. Uh, you know, getting a power play late in the period helped it, it, a couple of minutes of it, but I thought we settled ourselves down. So in the, in the big picture and where we've gone to as a team here uh, throughout the year, I thought we handled ourselves very well. And finally, Porty's question just sort of piqued my curiosity. What, what can you do with the team on a day off, given all the restrictions against you? Yeah, I'm not going to go and get involved in, in discussing what they did. Uh, uh, we, we, we just try to manufacture something to where they could uh, just pal around a little bit and have a few, few, few laughs. Um, 
hard to do. You know, it's such a great city. So many things to do in this city, uh, but not going to piss them on about it. Uh, as far as what, what's going on, uh, this is part of our protocol. We need to follow it. Next, we'll go to Brian Hedger. Go ahead, Hedge. Hey, John, uh, you know, you obviously have a number of guys who are fighting, you know, through some confidence issues here and there, and, you know, and some struggles. Uh, is, is Alexander Texier, you know, is he one of those guys? And, and I mean, he got off to such a good start this year. Is the confidence kind of one of those things that just kind of went away from him and he needs to get it back? Yeah, I, I think it's been inconsistent for him for the last little while. Uh, I think it's to be expected playing at the center ice position and, uh, all the things that come with it and a young player. Um, he's full of energy as we all see. Uh, I, I think as he gains more experience, I think, I think he won't be, I think he kind of chases the game at times. I think when he starts understanding and seeing the ice better and really for me, wanting the puck more, I, I think sometimes he wants to get rid of the puck so quickly. Um, I think if he wants the puck more and feels more confident there, I think the game will slow down for him. Uh, so, yeah, he, he's a he's one of the guys. We, we've had a bunch of them, as you said. Uh, uh, but uh, we're going to continue to work with him and try to gain, gain him some experience here. And hopefully uh, some good things will happen for him and he'll regain some of that confidence. Have you seen uh, Emil Bemstrom grow in that department in the last two or three games as far as wanting the puck more and, and kind of being more noticeable out there? Has made some good plays, has, has made some bad plays, uh, as expected. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to criticize mistakes. I, I think he's working at his game. Um, the, the big thing with Bemmer, like, like he needs to score that goal. Jens makes a great play, and that's a, a huge part of his game uh, is, is the goal scoring. That's why we, we, uh, we want to we give him an opportunity to see if he can gain some confidence scoring goals because he can. Um, uh, it'd be, that would have been good for him. Like I, I, I leaned over to a coach right after it happened. I said, man, that would have been so good for our team right now in this game. It would have been so good for him uh, just so it relaxes him. But uh, Hedge, I, th I think he's improving. Uh, he, he did some, a number of good things on the wall. Uh, he's understanding our coverages. But we want to get to the good part of his game, and that's his offensive part. I hope that comes along. Are you starting to see uh, with with Nash? I mean, he's been here for three years now. It looks like you're starting to kind of use him in some you know different situations. Is that am I seeing that right? A and and B is that by default or just something that you you, you kind of like having him out there you know with some skill guys? Well, I, I think part of it it's him, uh, and part of it is just the uh, the makeup of our team. Uh, we 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 need to get a center iceman that can distribute a puck. Uh, can play center ice, can handle the low coverages, and also bring some offense. Nasher has shown even before we got him, uh, you move him up and down down the lineup. He's been he's a, he's been a, a utility guy for me since he's been here, and, and I put him at center ice a couple of games ago because, like I told you, after Jack, I thought he was the one that was distributing the puck the best in the middle. And uh, in fact, I thought he was distributing the puck better than Jack at certain times uh, prior games. So. Uh, we put some lines together that I, I didn't think I'd put together and have Bjorkstrand on his side and putting Bemmer, two goal scorers on his side. And I think the line has played pretty well. I, it was one of our more consistent lines the last game. Uh, so, you, you know what? You never know. You, you just don't know uh, uh, where guys fall at certain times of the year. He's been a pretty important guy for us here, really taking almost some top six minutes here uh, for us as we have struggled offensively and with some guys struggling. Next, we'll go to Mark Shy. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you, Todd. John, I'm curious. I don't know if I've seen this before. You paid much attention to this, but two of the lines the last game were all right-handed shooters, meaning you had a couple guys on their off wing. Is that something that you consider when making the lines? Or, how, you know, I think it was Bemstrom and Line A are playing on their off wing. Just any thoughts on that at all? It wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't design the lines because of that. Uh, Mark, we have talked about uh, being on your offside, helping us get out of our end zone. I think you can protect the buck, puck better. I think you can protect a pinch. You can put the pinch on your back and you can open yourself up and look to the middle of the ice. You can come out the middle of the ice or weak side a lot better on your offside. Uh, 
I think I, I think Patty's doing it too much, yeah, quite honestly. He's good at it, but I think he's very comfortable with it. And I think he's doing it too much uh, instead of skating and, and trying to take some people on. So that has certainly been talked about instead of just jamming things into shin pads on pinches. So it certainly helps on your offside. Bremer made a really nice play the last game and he took the pinch. Uh, Nasha supported the puck underneath the puck, supported the puck, bang. He just a little five foot pass on his forehand off the wall and we're out of the end zone. Uh, so those are, those are good plays for offside wingers to work on uh, when they're in that situation. And John, are you making any lineup changes tonight and is Veva line in the backup? Uh, there are no lineup changes. Next, we will go to Owen Newkirk. Go ahead, Owen. Hi, John. You touched on this in the earlier part of your comments about the late third period, but I wanted to ask you a little bit more specifically as a coach, and you see the opposition score two and really have a surge like that. Uh, are you f resisting the temptation to do something, to step in and, and, and not – I mean, because you definitely let your group work it out. And as you said, they weren't spooked. And I, I, by my count, I had zero quality scoring chances allowed in the last about eight minutes. There was that one play with Gurionov who was yes. real close. But yeah. other than that, you yeah. your guys worked it out for themselves. How, do you sometimes have to sort of bite your hand and not jump in and, and do a coaching move there? Yes, because I think sometimes we screw it up as coaches. Uh, like I said after the game – I'm thinking, call a timeout. I look up at the clock. We're not far away from a TV timeout. And I'll say it again. I, I think there should be a rule in the buildings that when a coach calls a timeout, there can't be any music. It has to be quiet. Uh, because when you call a timeout, then all the, that damn music that you play in the buildings and all the stuff and that's going on, all the screaming going on in that scoreboard, I'm yelling at the team. I, I may be calm and trying to calm them down, but I have to yell because they can't hear. And now I have this thing on, I got to yell even louder. So that comes into play. So I, 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 I was thinking about it, but I said, you know what, I'm going to leave it alone. And uh, Max turns one over and makes a, uh, a really bad situational play about a minute later. And that's when Gary Onoff almost scores back door. And we just talked about it in our meeting about situational play. Max just, should be throwing the Max should be throwing it behind the net. He makes a, a soft play up the strong wall going the other way. They gobble it up and go in an odd man rush. Uh, yeah, so I'm wetting my pants behind the bench on that rush, saying, should I have called it? And uh, but after that, I thought we really settled down. So you don't want to script it that way, but I really thought it was a really good process for a, a team that has lost confidence a lot this year. Uh, to go through and feel good about it and maybe can lean on it later if we're in that type of situation. The other question I had was more of a philosophical one from a, a workload that you were talking about with your off day with the players. The stars do not have more than one non game day or one day off between games, the rest of the season. I think that going back to the beginning of the week, it was 40 games in 70 days when you, and, and bones has told us that they are, his staff is terrified about injuries because of that kind of workload. I, I don't want you to necessarily comment on the star schedule specifically, but when you have that much of a condensed schedule, how do you balance uh, rest management with your players versus the fact that you do get touches in practice way more than you do in games? Yes. Yeah. And it's a, uh, I mean, th through some of the cancellations your team has gone through, I mean, they they have to make up games, and it puts them in a in a real jam. Uh, my my philosophy in not only in this situation, but even during just a regular uh, a regular season, because we travel so much, I do think it has helped the way it's traveled this year. Where you're kind of playing like a baseball, kind of a miniature baseball series, where you just play two games, you stay there. I think it's really helped the athletes as far as the travel. Well, you're not getting on that plane every other night traveling and going to play. You're in the city for a few days. I think that helps on the wear and tear. But for me, my whole philosophy is I go into a season looking to get my team rest versus trying to find practice time. And I don't care if we need the practice time or not. I'm always trying to err on the side of, I'm trying to try to rest that team as much as I can because Owen, it's not so much the physical part of it, it's the mental part of it. That's where I think things break down is the mental part of it first, then it gets into the physical part as far as injuries and just 
just the, the dog days of the season. So I'm always erring and I'm going to rest my team versus trying to find practice time. Excellent. Thanks very much, John. You bet. And lastly, for Torts, we'll go to Aaron Portsline. Go ahead, Corey. Yeah, John, you've fielded a bunch of questions uh, about Max Domi's struggles this year. Are you starting to see flickers of life there these last few games with him? At times. At times. He was involved in, I think, three or four scoring chances in our last game, which is a good sign. I think his, his legs are moving more consistently than they were. Um, but I, I am I'm not... I'm certainly not settling for the standard right now. And I know Max isn't either. Max knows uh, how good a player he can be. And as I always say, that's the most important person. He knows he can be better. I know he can be. That, that really doesn't matter. It's the player. And, and he knows he can be. So uh, as our team, uh, we're trying to take steps. Uh, we're even teaching a little bit differently. And, uh, you know, instead of five on five D zone coverage, cause we've struggled so badly there, we're taking sections of our coverages and, and talking about those and, and then trying to build it. You know, we're trying to build it. I think that's what Max has to do with his game. Just take a section at a time, uh, a few minutes at a time and try to get yourself better. And then hopefully some good things happen. And then here, that is the most important thing for Max is to clear his head and for him to feel good about himself. 